keychain. Ta 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 ta. Sounds like the start of a horror movie. It was one of you. I don't know. Figure it out. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. I was very busy this week. I didn't really get a chance to look at the scriptures. I got home last night at 10.30 p.m. When I looked at them, I didn't like how they looked. So I had to make some changes. Um, there was a section of scripture that was just taken out of context. I don't, I don't like to use scripture uh, for application purposes. You know, today it's very popular in the American church to take scriptures and apply them uh, to your life. Uh, in other words, how could, how could I use the word of God to make my life better? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you're seeing a trend in contemporary Christian music too, or you should see, where people don't even sing the songs anymore. They just sway and they close their eyes. So it's not about God anymore, it's about a feeling. The music, contemporary music has become a drug. That's all. Jesus has become a drug, not a king, not a Lord, and definitely uh, not a Messiah. And uh, you should be seeing these things because they're blatant. You know, this is, this is part of what's going on. It's insidious because Satan is great at what he does. So he doesn't come at you and go, I'm going to ruin your life. You know? Um, Anyway, so I, I saw these scriptures that I was using, a couple of them, and I realized, no, when Paul wrote that, it had nothing to do with what it was being connected with. So I'm a big fan of just taking the word for what it says, and what, what are you saying, God? What are you saying, God? Well, how, how, how should we interpret this? What are you saying? Not, uh, what does it look like to me? You know? I, I mean, I wouldn't even bother asking you today how you feel, because it doesn't matter how you feel. Not that I don't care, it's just that I don't care. <laughs> In other words, should we go on feelings or should we go on truth? So we have to stick with this because this is what we know to be true. And we have to embrace this because I might have felt like not coming here today. I might not feel like loving burn. I might not feel like a lot of things. So if I walk by feelings... I'm going to be in big trouble, and so is everybody that's going to come in contact with me. The Bible says to walk by, not feelings, by faith, trusting God, trusting his word, right? So, um, that's just how I feel. How about that? <laughs> okay. Um, so, hopefully, um, if I seem a little irritated, it's because I, I have no, I'm on no sleep. But I don't want you to take out the violin and go, oh, Rabbi, you're so dedicated. It, it's, not, it's not that. When, you, when you're handling the word of God, you should be fearful. Even when you're sharing it with people, you have to be very careful about what you're saying to them. Because you're responsible for every word, even every idle thought. We're being lied to today about God. The fear of God is about as extinct as the dodo bird. Nobody's afraid of God anymore. They're afraid of everything else. They're afraid of the future. They're afraid of the government. They're afraid of the economy. They're afraid for their health. Why be afraid of God, right? Rabbi, you need some sleep. I know, I'll get some later. Relax. Out of noise, my light and my salvation, whom do I need to fear? How long have you been a believer? <laughs> Psalm 27. This is, by the way, there's probably like five to ten verses of scripture that everybody knows. This is one of them that's always quoted. Along with, I can do all things. Along with, don't be anxious in anything, but in everything. We're praying. There's certain, right? They make the t-shirts. But I got news for you. Everything in here is important. God didn't say, hey, that's a good one. Let's do a t-shirt. I don't know is my light and salvation. Whom do I need to fear? 
Adonai is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, I wish I grew up with the hymns. The hymns are so amazing. I'm starting to learn them more and more. The more I become a, you know, the longer I'm a believer. Songs like When I Survey the Wondrous Cross or Blessed Assurance. You know, absolutely phenomenal words. And it's all about the greatness of God. It has nothing to do with us or our feelings or nothing. Absolutely stunning. God is our all in all. He is a light in the darkness. He's a deliverer from my enemies and he's a refuge in the storm. Period. End of story. When evildoers assailed me to devour, devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they stumbled and fell. A lot of people um, will say that this psalm is prophetic about the Messiah and you could definitely see it. Because remember when the Roman soldiers and the temple guards said, whom do you want? And they said, Yeshua from Nazareth. And he said in John 18, 6, I am he. And they fell backward to the ground. They stumbled and fell. So this is very much a prophetic psalm, but you can apply it to your life, no question about it. If an army encamps against me, my heart will not fear. If war breaks out against me, even then, I will keep trusting. Just one thing have I asked of Adonai. You know, I've said this time and time again. I'm a big, big fan of one thing, people. I think if you're here today and you could take one thing away and apply it to your life and create a closer walk with the Lord, then mission accomplished. You don't need a hundred things today. Just one thing. Just one. Focus on one. Be simple. Don't be too complex. Just one thing have I asked of Adonai, only this will I seek, to live in the house of Adonai all the days of my life, to see the beauty of Adonai and visit him in his temple. The best of all gifts is God's presence in our lives and in our worship, period. Nothing's like it. I was just sitting in my chair in my little office, crying this morning and thinking, I don't care where I am. I don't care if it's where it is, a prison or a palace. I don't care. As long as I'm in God's presence. It's glorious. I thought of 21 years I sat in that office crying. Almost every day in God's presence. Nothing special about my backyard. There's definitely nothing special about the house. Nothing special about the neighborhood. Nothing special about the city. But that spot is glorious. Absolutely stunning. For he will conceal me in his shelter. Look at this incredible optimism that's produced by faith. On the day of trouble, he will hide me in the folds of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be lifted up above my surrounding foes. This is incredible. Can you imagine if we believe this? Can you imagine? I'm not assailing you or me. But can you imagine if we believe what this said? Just think about it. If we really, you know what I mean. It's not because we're bad people. There's no malfeasance or evil. We're just us. We're frail and we get scared. Can you imagine if we didn't? change everything, right? We'll work on it today, I promise. I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing praises to Adonai. Look, look, some of you don't know me from a hole in the wall, and I don't know you either. And no matter how long I stay here, I won't know you. Some of you I know 20 years, and I don't know you. If you knew me, the way God knows me, you might not be listening to me right now. And if I knew you the way God knew you, I'd probably walk out. Think about God's mercy and grace. Let's take off the holier than thou mask. Come on. You're in a safe place. This is Beth Yeshua. You don't have to put on your game face. There's no selfish ambition. There's no competition. There's no, I'm going to one-up you with my theological understanding. Not here. It's not going to work. 
We've worked too dang hard for 21 years to make sure that we're put on the same playing field, which is nice and low, and God is lifted high, front and center. You, we just play the background, stage left, stage right, they dance, they play. I'm coming off here in a minute, but I am not high and lifted up. That's the presence of God, man. And just in case you don't believe me that this is a safe place, let me give you some facts, because you know I'm a big fact guy, right? I mean, people have a problem with science. Science just cooperates what the Bible says. Facts are truth, they're important. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how people identify today. It's all nuts, right? They identify with all kinds of things. Well, this is the way I identify. If Sally had two apples and she ate one, she's got one left. That's a fact. According to the Bureau of Safety Statistics, 20% of all fatalities, all fatal accidents, occur in automobiles. One in five people that die, die in automobiles. 17% occur at home. Imagine that. You thought you were safe at home, huh? Nope, you got a 17% chance of dropping dead. 16% on planes, trains, and boats. Oops. You ready? 0.0001% occur in the house of worship. So you're safe. Fact. Listen, Adonai, to my voice when I cry. It's okay to cry out to God. Get serious. Don't come to him with a big need like, like habit stance, like, hey, God, uh, it's cool. You know me. I, I just need. That doesn't move him. Somewhere I read somewhere, I don't know where, but a broken heart and a contrite spirit he will never deny. If you got it so together, then, then have it together, man. Leave God alone. He's got more important people to deal with, like people that are desperate. Rabbi, there's people here for the first time and they're probably not going to come back. Should, should that affect me adversely or should I be even, even be concerned? I'm only concerned about one thing, that God's happy, period. I'm not concerned about me, you, anybody else here. I'm concerned that God is happy. Because if God is happy, you know that saying, if mom is happy, every if God is happy, everybody would be happy. Mama. Stupid saying. <laughs> Listen, I annoyed to my voice when I cry. Show favor to me and answer me. My heart said, if you seek my face, your face, I don't know, I'll seek. That's his presence. That's his favor. That's his goodness. That's his kindness. That's his mercy. Do not hide your face from me. Desperate. Real. Real. Don't turn your servant away in anger. You are my help. Don't abandon me. Don't leave me, God my Savior. I could so relate to the Psalms. That's why I read one every time I'm here. I cannot relate to when somebody says to me, fine, I'm fine. What does that even mean? Had my father and mother have left me, which happens, sadly enough, I don't know who will care for me. Some of you feel like orphans because your father wasn't around, your mother was around. Guess what? We're all orphans. We've all been adopted by Almighty God. He is our father by adoption. Teach me your way, I don't know. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Don't give me up to the whims of my foes. For false witnesses have risen against me. And those who are breathing violence. If I hadn't believed that I would see God's goodness in the land of the living, that means in this life's arena. That just doesn't mean, you know, I'll be horribly miserable. And but when he comes, everything's going to be perfect. You can have God's presence now. Put your hope in Adonai. It's 
a little personal advice from heaven based on Yeshua's own experience in trusting the Father. This is what he would say to you today if he was here. Put your hope in Adonai. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Yes. Put your hope in Adonai. Father, we totally uh, not only appreciate you and obviously love you, but little do we know we need you. And that need is going to become stronger and stronger as time passes on. <laughs> Maybe somebody in here doesn't realize how much they need you. But time will tell. We all will. And Father, you're so good. That even when we turn our back on you, you never turn your back on us. And that's amazing. I don't understand it. I could not do what you do. <laughs> You're amazing. Nobody like you. You're incomparable. Absolutely, positively incomparable and ineffable. And Father, I hope and I pray that Beth Yeshua puts a smile on your face today. It's in your son's name, Yeshua, we pray. Amen and amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.